Ah, so we meet again in the recording studio. Hi. Good morning. How you doing? I'm actually getting a nice little beard cut and a haircut tomorrow, but you don't get to see the end result of that because um, if you can't handle me at my worst, well, you can't have me at my best. So, mmm. <laughs> this is stupid. Uh, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to another Coffee Games where we discuss different things in the gaming industry here. Uh, and I wanted to talk about uh, remasters for a second. I know I talked about it on the podcast before, the Games Groceries podcast, but... I kind of wanted to talk about how game remasters are necessary for gaming. Are they even necessary? What's that all about? Are we actually going to get that Mass Effect remaster in October? I sure hope so, Jeff Grubb. But anyways, before we get started with our conversation, uh, how you doing? You doing good? Cool. Welcome to the channel. If you haven't yet, definitely hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know when all these episodes come out as well as our weekly podcast, The Games of Grocery Podcast. And if you get to the end of the video and you enjoyed what you watched, definitely give it a like and a share so that you can uh, help out the channel a little bit and so people know about the channel and all these videos. So with that said, you know, uh, let's start off our conversation. So in terms of game remasters, even game remakes, I more want to talk about remasters more than remakes, but but, uh, you know, it brings me up to uh, a good point here. Are these necessary for gaming? Is it damaging gaming industry? I is it too much? Are we getting too many remasters? Is the Tony Hawk remaster going to be a great game? Uh, trick question. Yeah, it kind of is. But I want to get started with my first point about the history of video games. So I think it's important to keep the history of video games preserved for generations to come. I mean, in the last episode of the podcast, we had on Patrick Hickey Jr., who's going on a whole book series about the preservation of game history and talking with classic game developers. And I, and I think game preservation is important if we're going to solidify this industry. We have, you know, classic movies and classic music that are preserved throughout time. We got halls of fame and all that, but game preservation is still working on that and i think remasters could help with that well on one hand if you remaster a game it keeps it relevant and it keeps it active for for one example a lot of bethesda fans want a fallout 3 remaster not necessarily for graphical fidelity which yeah that would be great not even in the same light as a fallout 4 engine but just a little bit of graphical fidelity here and there you know some some textures and in, in that but it's not even that it's more of just keeping it active more on pc because if you have a newer pc or even kotor it has a problem with this a lot of older games have a problem with this you update to a new pc it can't run old systems anymore every time i try to play kotor on a windows 10 pc uh, uh, the game crashes and corrupts the file. Thank you for that. But, and I know there's a ways around it, but my point is, is that there shouldn't be ways around it. The, my, my point is that remasters can just, can just work. Uh, Todd Howard, uh, it just works. But my point is that it keeps it active. It keeps it relevant. Uh, not even for the graphical fidelity or even the textures, right? It just it just works on PCs and other systems. But on the other hand, okay, on the other hand, I think true preservation of game history is to preserve the true original versions of the game. I mean, where you're having, uh, you know, rumors of a Prince of Persia uh, remaster and a lot of things are, you know, kind of rumoring against the, uh, the, the very, very first Prince of Persia from the 80s. And I think the true game preservation is to keep that version preserved and understood by, you know, new generation of gamers, which we'll get to in a minute. But if a remaster of that, what, what will that look like? Is it a full remake? Is it a remaster? Is it a remaster of Sands of Time? But here's the thing. I think true game preservation comes from preserving the true original editions. So on one hand, yeah, it keeps those old games fresh new active and you can play them on newer systems but on the other hand i think it can be ignored of the original systems but i think that remasters do play a big role in game preservation and i, and I think it does play an important role and i think remasters are necessary for that it can damage it but i kind of want to move on to my second point here 
So kind of relating to game preservation, especially this new remaster of Destroy All Humans is a great example of this, is that we have the chance to modernize old controls. It seems like these older games were designed with simplified controls, there weren't as many buttons, there weren't these modernized controllers that we do have today, or even keyboard controls, even though keyboards were always the same. Don't listen to me with that. But my point is that you can modernize old controls, you can modernize even what I talked about in the first point, you can modify uh, the texture overlays. You can modernize so many different things that you did not have before. And I think that's an important part in game preservation. I, I think that remasters play a big role in terms of giving these classic developers new tools to actually put out the vision that they had before. Now we have the opportunity to smooth things out. Now we have the opportunity, the assets to actually make a smooth game probably my biggest complaints it's it's still a good game please forgive but my biggest complaint with super mario sunshine is that it's a platforming game but i always notice that when i jump and i land mario always slides forward even just an inch so it's hard to sense where i'm gonna land when i jump because he always kind of slides forward a little bit. You'll notice it when you play it too, but if we had a Super Mario Sunshine remaster, Nintendo, but if we had a Super Mario Sunshine remaster, maybe we can fix that. It, it kind of uh, smooths out the controls there. And it's not necessarily the controls, but at least the mechanics of the game, Mario just kind of lands and sticks his landing instead of sliding forward and I just fall off, even though I stuck the landing, Nintendo, but, I digress. My point is, is that with these remasters, you know, kind of connecting into the game preservation point that I had, we have an opportunity to smooth out the controls, to modernize them. Like I said, with Destroy All Humans, now it puts in a little alien skateboard to, you know, move around the open world that we have. And I'm not trying to say that classic game developers were wrong. I'm saying is that now classic game developers have more tools to put out their vision. I will never say that a classic game developer is wrong. In the same way, filmmakers, amateur filmmakers, before you had these really crappy cameras at your disposal, but now, welcome to 2020. Uh, well, um, not all of it's good. Uh, Hi, 2020. But we're in a modern age where getting tools to become an amateur filmmaker is a lot more accessible. We have YouTube that you can just put out your content uh, just to the public and you have a lot more tools to become an amateur filmmaker. But in the same way of game development, we have way more tools. In fact, that's why indie games are so much on the rise because things are so much more accessible now. So I think remasters play a big role in that in terms of making things more modernized. So I talk about all this just to lead up to my final point here, where we can keep retro games active and we can keep them relevant, but we can also modernize the controls because I believe this is all leading up to an important thing. This is why I think remasters should be a thing. And I think it all comes down to the next generation of gamers, the ones that come after us uh, because um, I'm 29 and considered old for some reason. So the next generation of gamers, the ones that the first system that they ever had was a PS4 or uh, an Xbox One. Hey kids, you like Xbox One? No, you don't. It's only the PlayStation 4. I get it. I understand. But the thing is, is that with their new systems, right, the PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, that, 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 that that's their first system. These next generation gamers are used to a certain graphical fidelity. They're used to modernized controls. So if we were to introduce them to old games, and I, and I think even gamers of our age and their, their new gamers and their first system was these next gen systems or these current gen systems they're used to a certain graphical fidelity dan hutton who is abraham lincoln on twitch is a uh, big uh uh enemy against retro games sorry dan you you're the best but she always says that if a game looks too old she just it, it just gets her out of the game she's currently playing mass effect right now which awesome but 
that's the thing is that they're used to these certain graphics. So I think a new gamer or a next generation gamer, they're more likely to play older games if they have newer graphics. If they're upgraded, there's more likely of a chance. So when I talk about Mass Effect, it's more likely that a new gamer will go into it if there's a Mass Effect remaster with new graphics modernized controls you know if the mako actually drove right and didn't flip over at the slightest turn that would be amazing by the way if we got a mass effect remaster and everything looked the same but the mako actually drove right Mm, that would be great but my point is that new gamers were, are more likely to go to these games if they're modernized and they controlled rights now i'm not trying to say that all these new gamers if they go to old games they will certainly go into video game history though you know pursue being a video game historian i'm not saying that all of them will but i think there's more likely of a chance that new gamers will become interested in game preservation if we introduce them to old games but with newer graphics they might say some of them might say, I want to see what the old version looks like. And then they'll try to research games that actually inspired this game. So I think remasters can actually lead to game preservation in this way because next generation gamers are used to this. And now they'll start to see like, oh, these games actually mattered. These games were actually good. They're better than um, <clears throat> Fortnite. But that's my point is that I think remasters have a huge role into getting new generation of gamers into game history. And I'm not saying all of them will, but I'm saying there's more likely of a chance if we remaster old games. Now, my point in all of this is to say that I'm super massively hyped for Tony Hawk remaster, that I do not care about the Marvel's Avengers game. I, I don't care. I'm gonna be spending all of my time in the Tony Hawk remaster. It's not even gonna be a joke. I've legitimately thought about taking a day off of work just to play Tony Hawk, but um, uh, uh, I, I can't because they need me and I, um, I will be playing it late, I'm sorry. But that's my spew about remasters and how they're necessary for gaming, but I wanna hear from you. Do you think remasters play a huge role in the gaming industry? Do you think it's important for game history? Do you think it damages game history or game preservation? Write your thoughts in the comments down below. I wanna hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, Definitely give it a like and a share so that more people know about it, as well as clicking that subscribe button and notification bell. When I say that all these videos come out, there's not gonna be one of these videos next week because it's Liz's birthday week and I don't want her to think about editing one of these videos. She does edit all these videos. So I wanna give her a little bit of a break on her birthday week. And uh, yeah, we're, we're just going to take a break next week. But until the next one in two weeks i guess i hope you enjoyed this one uh hope to see you in the next one and hey as we always say here on the channel um wear your mask Burp gang.